Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about how to become a great programmer. So let's get into it. I'm pretty sure that I've answered this question before, but you know, better, better, this, better safe than sorry, right? So I'm going to give it a bash and I'm going to try my best to explain it again, if I have already explained it. So this is, of course, you know, this is what quite a lot of enthusiasts wants to know so I'm just going to give you the things that I think are important because there's many there are many many ways to achieve this goal but uh, I'll, I think I can give you a few just general hints and tips so the first thing is of course that you need to have the coding skills so I that's probably fairly obvious if you want to be a great anything you need to practice 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 but you need also to consider something that is fairly important and that is that at some point you will start to stagnate. It is true. I know it may not feel that way right now, but you will stagnate at some point. And the difference between a really great programmer and a decent programmer is that you continuously keep on pushing yourself to learn more and more. And you continuously try to improve your own skill. It's, uh, so you can think of it as a similar sort of thing as building muscles where if you want to progress and get stronger and stronger, you have to increase the resistance of the weights. You have to have more weight and you have to add more. So what I highly encourage you to do is to have a just a general plan for what type of learning you will do once you get to be fairly complacent. You see, the reason why I say that you should have a plan for this is because it is so easy for you to get comfortable in the skill set that you have and simply stay within the sphere of knowledge that you have. And that's the quickest way to stagnate. It's the quickest way for you to halt your learning. It's similar to, if we take the gym analogy again, it is similar to say to going out in the beginning of things and saying, hey, I want to be able to lift this amount of weight. And then you may, in the beginning of things, actually start to progress because, you know, your body isn't used to exercise and then you adjust and finally you get to be able to leave, lift the weight that you're looking for. And then you just keep on doing that. And that is not as effective as, you know, achieving that goal and then going even before, further. But in order for you to actually get to a point where you're doing this consistently, you should have some type of plan for how to con how to actually improve your own learning. In other words, you need to know yourself good enough to well enough to understand what like what type of plan do you need to structure here. I can as an example, I can tell you that if you if you don't have a plan and you just say, you know, I'm just going to do a bit of coding here, I'm just going to do a bit of coding there, I'm going to read a lot of blogs and so forth. That's not going to help all that much because odds are that, and this might be hard for you to, to, uh, to accept about yourself, but this is true for a lot of people. What, you're, what you feel today is not what you're going to feel in 10 years. And that may sound very silly and very obvious, but I've seen this many times where people think they, I, they make themselves these bullshit promises. And they are bullshit promises. I've seen it a hundred times. And this is not just programming related, where people get really excited about something and they keep pushing on like the here and now and like they're going to commit to 100%. And my favorite one is, once again, getting into shape. They get really, like they get inspired by some movie, they get inspired by some other person and they really promise themselves this time it's going to be different. We're going to do this, we're going to do this. And then they can continuously fail at being consistent because they don't actually they, they, they get swept up by the emotions of the here and now but they don't actually account for those days in the future where they don't want to where they feel like they don't have the energy or they have achieved their goal do you see I hope that this makes sense to you because you will get to a point where you don't care anymore you will get to a point where you're so good at this programming thing that you don't really feel like you need to keep track of absolutely everything. You don't feel like reading the next blog post about some new framework that came out or some new tool or something like that. So what are you going to do when you hit that? 
When you, when you get there, where, or what are you going to do? Because that's the difference. Because most people who reach an expert level, they will get to that point. And this is the difference between those who go to become really, really great programmers and those who stay mediocre. If you stop there and you don't have an idea or a plan for how to push yourself beyond that comfort zone, you will not progress even further than that. So have a plan, first and foremost, for how to continuously improve your skills, even when your skills are pretty good, because pretty good is not the same as great. So apart from that, I would say that the second thing that is extremely important for you is to be a, like, have a, I'm not saying necessarily empathy, but I believe that you need to be the sort of person who truly understands the problem of other people. And in a way that requires you to understand people sometimes even better than they understand themselves. Uh, understand themselves. What I mean by that is that you can think, it as, uh, think of it as a similar type of thing to being a, well, for lack of a better analogy, a psychologist. So a person may come to you in this scenario as a psychologist and look for help with mental problems or depression or other things that they feel that they want to talk about. They want to talk to you about this because they themselves, they do not possess, even though, I mean, psychology would be quote unquote pointless if everybody could just readjust their way of thinking into a more productive way and more healthy way of thinking, but people don't actually have that ability. That's why we need them. And this is exactly how, uh, exactly the sort of thing that you need to get good at. So when a person comes to you, all they we re will really have for you are, well, not necessarily, but in my experience, users or people who want software developers to do something for them, they're usually really good at expressing problems with things. All, and they're also very good at expressing what they, what they don't like about something or what they like about something and things like that. They're really shitty, really shitty at giving you concrete ideas on how to solve those problems that they are really shitty at. So a decent programmer is the sort of person who has the ability to to solve the problem when they explain when someone explains it to them what it is that they actually need to do like the, okay we have this problem we need you to build this this and that that's a decent programmer a great programmer can hear a person explain a problem to them and just identify that's your problem and i know how to solve that you may not understand that this is your problem but i i can hear from listening to you or i can understand your situation well enough so that i actually know how to solve this problem in a fashion that is going to just give you a wow sensation. Because that's the thing. It's, uh, it, I, it's, uh, it, it's, I don't know how to express it in a better way, but it's, it's to have that ability to really listen to people and to really understand a situation so well that you can figure out where the pain points are without someone necessarily knowing that these are pain points. That's when you're, you are a true problem solver of something. You, and you're, you're able to identify that something that some people may not even be aware of that this is an issue that they are having. But as soon as you show them the solution, they will absolutely love it. And they will ask themselves, how did we do without this? And it becomes almost a do like it becomes this thing that they just realize that, damn, this, have, have we been doing this in this fashion for so long? Why didn't we think about, think about this earlier? So, that's the second part, I think. I, um, I won't call it like, well, let's call it a problem solver mindset. Let's call it that. To be an, a person who can identify problems and, and basically execute solutions as to solving those problems. So what I want you to take away from this is that the first and foremost thing I think that you need in order to become a great programmer is to have a concrete, structured way of uh, ha handling pr like your increased skills. You need to basically be able to figure out how are you going to continuously develop your skill sets pretty much for as long as you live. And when are like, what are you going to do when five, 10 years from now, when you're so good at this thing that you know, you don't really care anymore, you don't really feel motivated anymore, because you can kind of just do all the things that you need to do, you really don't have to go further. That's the stuff. That's the hard part. 
the, it's not nobody has problems is you know doing something like this and learning when they're really motivated so you need to account for when are you what are you going to do when you're not motivated and the second part is be a true problem solver be the sort of person who can hear someone out listen to their stories and identify where they actually have issues and how we can solve those issues in an efficient manner. And these two go very close together. The more problems you know how to solve, the more ways you know how to solve something, in other words, the more skilled you are, the easier it will be for you to identify possible solutions to those problems that people have. Have a great day.